My first musical instrument was the violin, and both my parents are musicians, which is probably a story you hear, I'm guessing, quite often. But my uh, mom is a piano teacher, my dad is a trumpet professor, jazz professor. So I started on violin, did the whole Suzuki method, which actually I, I, I attribute a lot of my listening skills to that because the Suzuki method is all ear-based as opposed to reading-based, which I think is a great idea. Uh, but I started playing piano shortly thereafter, I don't know, maybe I was five or six, still play piano. I kind of consider that my second instrument. And um, my dad started me on trombone when I was uh, maybe 10 or 11. He kind of um, groomed me for his college big band because he was always short trombonists. Um, so I did actually start playing big band music with him, with the local professional orchestra when I was, you know, still in high school. So it's, it's not all that unusual, I guess, look, looking back then to now, um, seeing myself playing, all, playing in all these big bands here and elsewhere. Um, yeah, absolutely. Did the school band thing, took private lessons on the violin, took private lessons on the piano, took private lessons on the trombone. That was like every morning, you know, was, my parents were shuttling me around somewhere before school. Um, but I would say for, for my jazz education, I was largely self-taught. I mean, my dad is a jazz musician, so of course he gave me some real basic tools, told me what to listen to or what to listen for. But I think he left a lot of it up to me, which looking back, I. I really respect that approach because jazz is such a, a language that you do have to learn on your own. You have to learn orally. There's really no other way around it. You know, you can be told what to hear and what to work on, but in, it, it, you have to find those things orally on your own. So uh, for me, it's really been just a, a process of discovery from the very beginning until certainly until now. Yeah. Um, well, my first teacher when I arrived to New York, and I was super green, came from the, the very suburban country, kind of um, not backwards, but very little culture in Spokane, Washington at the time. And I uh, came and studied with Steve Touré, who is like, you know, the hippest of all hip jazz musicians. And um, he, really, he, he really taught me a lot about, about the culture, about the music, about the instrument. And I owe a lot to him. Um, Wycliffe Gordon was another influential teacher of mine on the trombone and then also in terms of composing and arranging which is what I spent a lot of my time doing recently. Um, Manny Album, Michael Abene, uh, and also David Berger, the great Duke Ellington um, uh, scholar, were, were very important in my upbringing. Yeah, serious. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge student of arranging. I always have been. I've been helping David Berger edit these uh, Jazz and Lincoln Center um, uh, publications that they do called Essentially Ellington. I've been doing this for years and years, and that was really, I think, where I learned to arrange and orchestrate, was just studying these scores in the process of transcribing and editing. Um, but then also playing in the Skill Evans project, for me, you know, as sitting on the bandstand playing the parts, you have a completely different perspective of what is happening and how it feels. I mean, you can see it on the page and, and, and certainly glean a lot from that experience, but playing it, hearing those moving parts around you, especially with Gil Evans, because it's so intricate, and, and you playing that music, you really get a sense of how just how, how time consuming it must have been, how, how meticulous he was. Every single beat, something interesting is happening. Whereas now it's like, okay, two beats go by, you got, you got your MIDI keyboard, boom, there's your half note expanded into your trombone section. It's, it's easy to skip that step. But I mean, literally every beat, every part has something of interest. It's, it's unbelievable, this how, and that's why it's fun to play. You know, some of the most mu fun music to play. This is Ryan Keberly, and for more videos, go to jazztimes.com.